A very warm good evening to senior faculty members and colleagues. I am Dr. Kiran, anesthesiologist practicing in Tawang. I would like to thank uh, Dr. Srinivas Lusar for giving me this opportunity to speak in front of you all about anesthesia at high altitude. I am sharing a pre-recorded video because I stay in a very remote location and it will not be very feasible for me to connect to you live. Any altitude above 2500 meters is high altitude. The people who permanently reside at these altitudes, the people who visit these places for adventure, leisure and work, the soldiers who move in and out of these places. So at some point of time, they do need medical and surgical attention. So having basic knowledge of high altitude physiology enables better patient care. When we ascend to higher altitudes, the atmospheric barometric pressure drops from 760 mmHg. Let's consider an example where we are at an altitude of 11,000 feet. Atmospheric pressure would be 510 millimeters of mercury. So 21 percentage of 510 would be 107. That is partial pressure of oxygen at that altitude. With alveolar gas equation, we can calculate alveolar oxygen partial pressure. At sea level, it is 100 millimeters of mercury. We all know that. And at an altitude of uh, 11,000 feet where a person is not hyperventilating partial pressure in the alveoli of I mean, partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli would be approximately 47 that is considerably low to overcome this hyperbaric hypoxia body adopts to the situation by a process called as acclimatization there are a series of cardiopulmonary and hematological changes uh, which bring about increase in oxygen content in the blood and also the increased delivery of oxygen to the tissues Due to hypoxia at higher altitudes, uh, there is a stimulation of chemoreceptors at the carotid body, which in turn in, uh, increase minute ventilation, leading to increased availability of oxygen at the alveoli. They also cause washing out of CO2, leading to respiratory alkalosis. This is compensated by renal loss of uh, bicarbonate, thus normalizing alkemia. There is also hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction. Uh, we all know that primary law of HPV is to uh, decrease blood supply to poorly ventilated areas in high altitude entire lung is poorly ventilated so the entire uh, i mean pulmonary system i mean pulmonary circulation is under severe vasoconstriction thus leading to increased pulmonary artery pressure and uh, making people susceptible to develop uh, high altitude induced uh, induced pulmonary edema this hpv has got no major role uh, to play in acclimatization in high altitude if you see oxygen dissociation curve, partial pressures of oxygen uh, at higher altitude falls on the steeper segment. So any variation, a minute variation in partial pressure would drastically change oxygen uh, saturation. Initially, there is a leftward shift of oxygen dissociation cone on ascent to high altitudes and gradually there is reshifting back to right due to mainly due to increased 2-3 uh, DGP. And uh, finally, uh, in a well acclimatized individual, oxygen dissociation uh, comes back to its normal sea level position. Heart rate increases in higher altitude. That is mainly because of increased sympathetic activity and increased circulating catecholamines. And uh, parasympathetic, there is parasympathetic withdrawal also. So thus there is increased heart rate. Uh, due to hypoxia, there is peripheral vasodilatation and uh, there is hypoxia also causes sympathetic overactivity leading to vasoconstriction. So in a normal tensile patients who ascend to higher altitudes, their BP remains on a higher side. That is mainly because of resetting of uh, uh, central sympathetic outflow. As uh, heart, in terms of cardiac output, as uh, heart rate is also increased, uh, cardiac output increases, but which resettles to uh, normal cardiac output after a few weeks of acclimatization. On ascent to higher altitudes, there is increased uh, hemoglobin levels. That is mainly due to plasma hemoconcentration. There is also secretion of erythropoietin, which increases uh, red blood cell count, leading to polycythemia. Along with increased HB and polycythemia, there is this causes increase in viscosity. With increase in viscosity, uh, going beyond to certain level, O2 supply to the tissue is hampered. If you see platelet activity, there are some studies saying that uh, platelet activation is increased. And in terms of coagulation, the anticoagulation system is suppressed, uh, leading to increased susceptibility of DVT, PTE, and uh, CVT, and also arterial thrombosis like uh, stroke and uh, MI in young compared to low line does. As we ascend to higher altitudes, there is fatigue, there is impaired sleep, and uh, ascent of altitude causes uh, decreased oxygen content in the blood, leading to increased uh, cerebral blood flow to maintain uh, constant delivery of oxygen to the brain. 
we anesthesiologists must be aware um, should should be careful that even our own judgment might get hampered due to ascent to higher altitudes coming to renal functions uh, there is hypovolemia mainly due to increased diuresis increased water loss and uh, decreased uh, water intake uh, there is hemoconcentration mainly due to increased erythropoietin levels and uh, catecholamine levels in the blood uh, now let's talk about diseases which are specific to higher altitudes ams is most common among them that is acute mountain sickness uh, symptoms are mainly caused due to swelling of brain due to hypoxia uh, this usually appears on the first day of ascent to higher altitude symptoms include headache gi upset and uh, fatigue and sleep disturbance treatment would be stop for the ascent to higher altitude administer oxygen analgesics for uh, headache and also uh, astazolamide that's a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor this is, this hastens the process of acclimatization thus relieving patients of this ams symptoms next coming to high altitude induced cerebral edema there is swelling of brain and with the deterioration of brain function this is mainly due to increased blood flow to the brain in response to hypoxia uh, patient would be having symptoms of ams along with there is uh, altered maintenance and ataxia uh, again treatment would be stop for the ascent and descend the patient to lower altitudes administer oxygen there is a role of uh dexamethasone in patients who are having high altitude induced cerebral edema coming to high altitude induced pulmonary edema that is called as hep uh, there is leak and accumulation of uh, uh, fluid in the alveoli leading to hampering the oxygen and oxygenation and ventilation and this mainly happens on the second and third night of ascent to higher altitude uh people experience uh, people are tachypneic uh, they are hypoxic uh, they are dyspneic and uh, their x-ray shows uh, bilateral non homogeneous opacities at the hilar region and uh, they cough and uh, they have a pink frothy sputum in severe cases uh, treatment would be administration of oxygen for, prevent further ascent to higher altitudes descent to lower altitudes and nifedipine has a major role in treatment of uh, high altitude induced pulmonary edema along with dexamethasone in a situation where uh, we are unable to descend the patient down due to weather constraint or some any other issues we use a bag called as a hapo bag or hape bag uh, this it looks something like this and uh, we uh, we keep the patient inside this bag we close the zip and inflate with man, uh, manual pump and also with the uh, uh, continuous uh, pump machine uh, there is there is a window glass window through which we can monitor patient vitals and also we can communicate with signals to him uh, when adequately inflated uh, this bag mitigates the descent of uh, 1500 meters and that is considerable change there is also a pressure leak wall here so with continuous uh, pumping uh, pressure increases and there is a leak of uh, air from this area and thus maintaining uh, cross ventilation in this chamber coming to import important part of this session that is uh, anesthetic consideration uh, patients under uh, anesthesia at higher altitude are more susceptible for hypoxia hypothermia and hypovolemia there is increased risk of bleeding and coagulopathy a uh, patient who recently ascended to higher altitude might present to with uh, uh, acute uh, emergency and uh, they might be harboring some high altitude induced illnesses as they are not acclimatized uh, there is some altitude effect on equipment which i'll be discussing subsequently and uh, as these setups are uh, in a very remote location in a higher altitude so call for help would be uh, 100 miles away so you should be prepared to handle any such situation Uh, there is increase instead of pd ph also in higher altitudes in terms of equipments uh, flow meter which actually underreads uh, flow rates for both oxygen and nitrous and uh, we should remember that there is uh, the 21% of oxygen becomes hypoxic mixture at uh, high altitude when we are using low flow anesthesia and uh, oxygen and laser has to be calibrated for uh, higher altitudes uh, if you see isofluorine and cofluorine vaporizer their uh, concentration dial settings need not be changed because the saturated vapor pressure is independent of uh, barometric pressure so partial pressure of uh, volatile anesthetic agents at alveoli is same as that of uh, sea level so clinically the anesthetic effect is unaffected however concentration of volatile anesthetic effect uh, anesthetic agent delivered is higher uh, so you might notice that your uh, volatile anesthetic agents are getting depleted very sooner uh, whereas in terms of uh, desfluren i am not using desfluren at this altitude Uh, which may, uh, which delivers a fixed volume of vapor so lower partial pressure of uh, volatile anesthetic 
agent is delivered at alveoli so concentration dial has to be set manually it has to be manually adjusted to deliver that uh, that required amount of uh, partial pressure of volatile anesthetic agent so uh, what i can say is that the concept of mac has to be changed at higher altitudes it is minimum alveolar partial pressure uh, instead of mac capnographs uh, they malfunction at higher altitude that is mainly due to effect of low barometric pressure on the calibration system of the equipment uh, there is also reduced gas flow rates through the sampling chamber uh, it is always wise to get an abg done before taking up a patient to know his baseline uh, co2 levels and uh, ventilators when using volume control modes they deliver lower amount of uh, tidal volume that is mainly due to decreased uh, gas density at uh, higher altitudes uh, coming to cuff pressures of lma and edt uh, there is a changes of cuff pressure in uh, ascent or descent of altitude as we always know that uh, air expands on ascent to a higher altitude in a closed space so it has got some significance during aeromedical evacuation in unpressurized flights uh, when you are shifting a patient from some altitude to a, a tertiary care in a in a helicopter uh, we have to be specifically be careful about cuff pressure changes coming to use of inhalation agents uh, potency is proportional to partial pressure and not to concentration we have already seen in the pressure section that the partial pressure is dependent only on uh, temperature and not on uh, changes in barometric pressure so vapors delivered at uh, constant potency at constant temperature irrespective of altitude so in uh, inhalation agents such as uh, isofluorine and sevoflurane don't need to be uh, i mean concentration dial need not be changed setting of concentration dial need not be changed and uh, uh let's see an example uh, the mac of isofluorine is around 1.2 so at uh, 760 mm hg uh, 1.2% would be 9 point approximately 9.8 mm of mercury so when i set a concentration dial at 1.2 at higher altitudes uh though barometric pressure is low uh, the uh, partial pressure of volatile anesthetic agent uh, delivered at alveoli would be 9.9 uh, mm of mercury so there is no change in anesthetic effect Uh, at higher altitudes at a similar dial settings uh, desflurane we have already discussed uh, there is it needs to be manually adjusted uh, there are some studies about nitrous oxide which say that analgesia produced by uh, 50% of nitrous oxide is reduced to 50% at altitude of 5000 feet and it is reduced to nil at uh, 1000 feet uh, i at an altitude of 10000 at, at my my setup my ot i am not using nitrous oxide coming to few anesthetic drugs uh, benzodiazepines at a higher altitude have a greater respiratory depression than sea level ketamine has no significant depression of hypoxic ventilatory tract however it might worsen hpv and increase pvr the risk of developing pulmonary edema increases when using ketamine we have to be careful uh, and it is safer in fact in a field setup or in a remote location where uh, you have no help and uh, intact there are intact reflexes laryngeal pharyngeal reflexes and airway is maintained and uh, propofol it uh, might need a higher dose i mean higher doses are required to achieve similar base opioids when used in during post op analgesia should be careful they might blunt physiological response to high altitude uh, area as there is variable response to drugs at higher altitude uh, so during induction phase uh, drugs have to be titrated accordingly uh, and uh, spontaneous ventilation Uh, there is blunting of hypoxic ventilatory drive and uh, if you are keeping patient on a spontaneous ventilation that might lead to hypoxia there is significant uh, uh, delay in gastric emptying time so all patients are at risk of aspiration so full stomach precautions have to be taken uh, whenever possible uh, use rapid sequence induction and intubation uh, check blood glucose reg uh, regularly as there is increased consumption of uh, glucose at higher altitudes as we ascend to higher altitudes there is a reduction in temperature which might lead to hypothermia in patients and this hypothermia causes vasoconstriction and can mask hypovolemia so hypothermia also causes coagulopathy so before taking a patients uh, give warm iv fluids to patient warm your ot uh, watch for arrhythmias while warming the patient because cold returning blood to the heart uh, to the heart might cause some ventricular arrhythmias peripheral vasodilatation on rewarming uh, could cause could cause extensive hypotension and uh, shock
whenever there is a possibility use the regional anesthesia in high altitude they are safer uh, they preserve ventilatory response uh, duration of motor and sensory block is lower in high altitude area the incidence of pdph increases due to increased uh, cerebral blood flow uh, whenever you are doing upper limb blocks uh, due precautions to be taken not to block phrenic now and uh, if you are doing uh, 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 central vein cannulation accidental pleural puncture can lead to rapidly evolving your uh, thorax at higher altitudes uh, coming to fluid therapy use goal directed fluid therapy avoid overload mainly to uh, prevent uh, high altitude induced pulmonary edema and avoid underload uh, to prevent tissue hypoperfusion so my take home message to this session would be uh, an adequately acclimatized person is still under considerable physiological stress in a high altitude so know the physiology treat all patients as if they are full stomach uh, take your patients when they are adequately warm and adequately hydrated uh, close clinical and instrumental monitoring to be used when under anesthesia calibrate your equipments and know your equipment how they behave in higher altitudes and don't use fixed doses of anesthetic agent titrate anesthetic agents to the effect as anesthesiologist we are uh, sometimes uh, we are keen on knowing our history so i have included a slide where uh, I have mentioned some historical aspects of anesthesia at higher altitudes. These are my references for today's session and I thank you all for your time. I would be happy to clear your queries if there are any uh, via telephone or on uh, WhatsApp.